Pastor Nate should have just kept on going. We could have, we, we could have, we could have just took up the last next week. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Wow. To see a baptism, someone giving their life over to Christ. Isn't that an amazing sight? The church is growing. It's growing and growing. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. That's men, meaning plural, men and women, unto me. And we thank God so very much for his grace, mercy, and his power. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's good to see everybody. Everybody must be ready for Thanksgiving. <laughs> choinch. Oh, it's choinch. <laughs> yes, yes, this is the week. The week that we fellowship one with another and, and we get a chance to socialize and and be family. And that's what it's all about. Be family. Well, this, this is charged today. We're having a good time today, aren't we? Yeah. Well, the Spirit is in this place. He is, he is definitely working in this place. Um, this week, it's a week of family. Um, chance to, to eat. I know our household, we got... Uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, my husband bought a uh, 17 pound of potatoes. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, I'm looking, I was like, what are we going to do with all these potatoes? I mean, it's big. It's a big bag of potatoes. So if anybody here likes potatoes, <laughs> you see me. <laughs> we'll deliver some potatoes over to you. <laughs> what did you say? And also because of this week is the festive week. This Wednesday, our Bible class, we're, gonna, we're not going to have Bible class this Wednesday. We're going to pick up again next Wednesday after Thanksgiving. And so if you all, I'm going to put a plug in. Can I put a plug in for my, I'm going to plug it. Look, if y'all need a chance to get into the word and to socialize, right here on 7 p.m. on Wednesdays, we have a good time, a good time in the word. I see. I see quite a few people that are here that come to Wednesday night. So if you're looking for something to do on Wednesday night, come on by. 7 p.m. Not this Wednesday, but <laughs> next Wednesday. And uh, be spiritually fed. Sometimes you need a little plug-in in the middle of the week to get you to your next uh, spiritual feeding. Amen? I mean, Y'all, I'm stalling because it's charged up here. <laughs> Pastor, you should have just kept preaching I love my pastor. He he can put it, as I say when I come when I come from, he throws it down, <laughs> throws down the word. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna reread Mark 10 just for emphasis' sake. Y'all familiar with this story, blind, blind Bartimaeus? It's one of my favorite. I like. Uh, the Gospels because I like seeing Jesus in action because I, I, I'm not perfect y'all and, and, and don't laugh because I know somebody laughing right now <laughs> well neither are you either you ain't, you ain't perfect either but it's good to see how Jesus works in people's lives and, and how he makes a difference y'all got time for this today all right, here we go. Let's do this. All right, and I, I promise. I do know the food is over there, and I'm not going to be long if I can help it. All right. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Then they came to Jericho. Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, that is, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Don't go to sleep, Sammy. I'm, I'm hurrying up here. I'm just messing with you, Samuel. I'm just messing with you. That's my, that's my buddy. I can talk to him like that. Jesus stopped and said, call him. 
So they call to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight, his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by. Would you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for getting us up this morning to see another glorious and wonderful day. Father, we ask that you be with us today. Be with your word. Father, use me. Remove me that they might see you in me, O oh God. Let your holy and divine spirit flood this place, flood our hearts and minds, Father. Let your word go out as you have designed it to do. We just ask that someone will ask themselves, how can I get closer to you? We thank you for Jesus who gave us life and that life more abundantly. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Blind Bartimaeus. Here in this setting, we have Jesus and his followers are leaving Jericho because they are heading to Jerusalem. But as they are leaving the city, they come in contact with this blind man named Bartimaeus. Jericho, that was a big city, a very popular city. It was a resort city rebuilt by Herod the Great in the Judean desert. It was not far from the Jordan River crossing. Many people would come to the city, traders and tradesmen, having their wares and their things to sell to make money, and people would vacation there to see the sights and enjoy this glorious city. Jesus goes to Jerusalem because it's an opportunity to spread the good news of God's salvation. But now it's time for Jesus to leave to go to Jerusalem, where we'll, later we're going to find out Jeru Jerusalem has a significance for all of humanity. But on the way, they run into this blind man named Bartimaeus. He was sitting along the side, he was blind and he was begging. Well, why was he in this situation? Well, many occupations of the day required physical labor. So anyone with a crippling disease or disability was at a severe disadvantage and was usually forced to beg for money. To make matters worse, not only is Bartimaeus begging, but he's also blind. And blindness at this time was considered a sin because God didn't approve. Look at John 9 and verse 2. But here comes Jesus. Jesus casts away all of those notions. And here we are confronted with a blind Bartimaeus and a passing by Jesus. Y'all got time for this? And it dawns on me, here we are. This man has no sight, and he has no money. So if the truth be told, Bartimaeus is simply a microcosm for all of humanity. He visually, he's in darkness, and financially, he's strapped. Y'all don't know nothing about being strapped. So he is an example, a microcosm. So just as Bartimaeus is blind and broke, we without Christ are also blind and broke. Have I got a witness in here? So he's sitting on the side of the road begging, but he heard that Jesus was coming by. Look at verse, 10, uh, verse 47, Mark 10, 47. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Although he was blind, although he's broke, 
he did have the ability to hear. And when he had heard that Jesus was coming by, something inside of him stirred up. He must have said to himself, it's my opportunity to be changed. You do know Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So though he, was, he is without physical sight, he did have insight. So here he is. He decides to shout, Jesus, son of David. Have mercy on me. Notice he didn't say Jesus of Nazareth. He said Jesus, son of David. Well, why didn't he use Nazareth? When he shouted son of David, he's letting Jesus know that I have faith in you. By shouting son of David, he's appealing to the messianic nature of Jesus. Y'all, do, you do know he's the Messiah, right? And Messiah means Savior. When he shouted, Son of David, he's appealing to the salvific nature of Jesus. I'm not just calling the man Jesus. I'm calling on God to step in my situation and do something new in my life. How do I got a witness in here? Right, when he calls a son of David, Bartimaeus knows he knows already that he's going to be changed. But he's just not asking for physical vision. Bartimaeus is saying, I want what else you have. I want that spiritual vision. Oh, I feel like preaching here. Y'all help me out here. All right, all right, all right. Y'all know I wear glasses, right? I, I wear these glasses. And, 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 and I had a, this prescription done a while ago. Without these glasses, I really can't see very far. And some of y'all wear glasses too. By myself, I can't see very far. I'm only able to see just a few feet in front of me. But when I went to the doctor and they did the exam, they got me a prescription. I filled the prescription, got my glasses, and when I'm able to put them on, now I'm able to see a lot further than I could before. What am I trying to say? But by myself, I can only do so many things. But when I put on the Jesus lenses, have I got a witness in here? I'm able to see further than I could with just by myself. What I'm trying to say here is Bartimaeus knew that Jesus could do for him what he could not do for himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, when, when, when you start working on your faith, when you start activating your faith, you have to watch, you got to watch the crowd. Look at verse 48. As soon as he called out for Jesus, son of David, then here comes the crowd. 48 says, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Wait a minute. I'm on the sidelines. I'm blind. I'm begging. I'm trying to get to Jesus. But the crowd says, you need to shut up. You, you, hey, 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 you keep quiet over there. You, you, don't, you don't make a scene. We're, trying, we're hanging out with the Lord and Savior. You, 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 you don't matter. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't look now. Somebody needs to watch that crowd. See, the crowd told him to be quiet, told him to shut up, stop making a scene. Bartimaeus, basically what they were saying was, you are a societal reject. You don't matter. Only we matter. So I need for you, Bartimaeus, to shut up and stay in your place. Anybody ever made to feel like you don't matter? All right, all right, okay, okay. Or y'all don't like that, huh? All right. Uh, uh, anybody here lesbian? Anybody here gay? Anybody bisexual? Anybody questioning? Anybody black? Have I got a witness here? Anybody Latino? Anybody homeless? Female? Too skinny? Too fat? Too tall? Too short? Transgendered? 
Uh, anybody ever made to feel like you don't matter? Well, here's Bartimaeus. He's on the sidelines. He's begging. And everybody's telling him to shut up because you don't matter. I feel like, whew, I feel like preaching here. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Well, I got some good news for you. God sent Jesus just for the outcast. Have I got no witness? He sent Jesus for the marginalized. He sent Jesus for society's rejects. What's going on here? I, I feel some music. <laughs> Holy Spirit is playing behind me, huh? All right. <laughs> but Jesus came for those that are relegated to the sidelines. You know what? And life is hard all by itself. Think about Bartimaeus. He's blind and he's poor. Life is hard enough as it is. And the last thing you need is somebody telling you, you don't matter. <laughs> you got a remote control or something. Like that. <laughs> can, I, can I do it like I really want to do this? I need some help. Y'all help me. Because I really preach. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody get to Jesus. <laughs> when you're down and out, the last thing you need is somebody to tell you uh, some bad news. What we really need is some good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When your money is short, you need some good news. When your credit cards are maxed out, you need some good news. Ah, uh, when you're at the doctor's office and you can't get a response from the staff. Have, have I got a witness in here? You need some good news. When you can't get your, re, your prescriptions filled down at the pharmacy because the pharmacy tech is sitting there on the phone, you need some good news. Uh, Y'all ain't been there. I have. <laughs> that sounds personal. It is personal. <laughs> but life is hard. It can be hard when you get passed over for promotions, when you're still looking for your life partner and your life and your years are getting advanced and your family won't accept you for who you are. You're trying to keep the rent paid or trying to find a place to live. The last thing you need is someone to tell you you don't matter. You need some good news from Jesus. So what I appeal to you is this. this. Don't listen to the crowd. Listen to Christ. But wait a minute, not Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus didn't pay them no mind. Verse 48, the latter part says, when they told him to be quiet, he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus didn't listen to the crowd. He held to his faith that, and knew that the Savior could give him the sight. Watch this. Y'all watch this. Look at verse 49. 49. My version is a little different. 49 says Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up. On your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. There's a lot in that sentence. First thing we find is Jesus stopped. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 49, Jesus stops. Said, call him. Then he threw his cloak. Then he jumped to his feet. And he came to Jesus. Jesus stopped. Called him. He threw his cloak. Jumped to his feet. And came to Jesus. Brother Blue, Jesus stopped. He called him. 
The man threw his cloak, jumped to his feet, and came to Jesus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The man is blind. He can't see. All he did was call the name of Jesus. And Jesus stopped and called to him. So he threw his cloak, got on his feet, and came to Jesus. Hmm. How many know that when you call Jesus, he'll always stop for you? Huh? You don't need a long prayer. Sometimes you just have to say, Lord, just have mercy on me. Jesus is going to stop just for you. And not only will he stop for you, he's calling you. Ah, Matthew said it best. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Come to me and I will give you rest. Jesus is calling you. Bartimaeus called him. The crowd told him to shut up. You don't matter. But he persisted all the more. And Jesus stopped just for blind Bartimaeus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he, I don't understand. Jesus stopped. Jesus called him. But he threw his cloak. Wait a minute. Let's see how this works out. Y'all got time for this? You got time for this? You got time for this? Let me try to do this. I'll do it. I know we spent a lot of money on this stuff. We'll, We'll, we'll ask for another offering to, to, to get it fixed. Ah, okay. Sometimes when you are in pursuit of Jesus, sometimes you got to let something go. Uh, see, a cloak in biblical times was an outer garment that was wide and long. Usually it reaches down to the ankles. This is the best I could get a beach towel down there down there at the Target, or Target. <laughs> In many cases, the cloak was made from lamb's wool. And as people would travel from place to place, they would be subject to strong winds that would blow sand and dust that would render a person dirty. So a cloak would protect the person from outside or exterior adverse forces. A cloak was so common that it also became a person's identity. People would know you from afar by your cloak. Oh, there go Van. He's in that blue cloak. So, so in this event, a cloak was a garment of protection. It was a garment of comfort. It was a garment of identity. It also had all of his, you know, his essence in the cloak. But in this case, when Jesus came by, when Jesus stopped, when Jesus called to Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus really quickly just threw off his cloak. Y'all don't get it. You see, what I've learned, learned from this example is when you're trying to get to Jesus, you're going to have to throw off what you believe to be your sense of protection. You're going to have to throw off your comfort zone. You're going to have to throw off your old self, your old memories, self-doubt, insecurities, fears, limiting beliefs, whatever that's in the way between you and Jesus. You're going to have to throw it aside. You're going to have to throw it aside because nothing needs to be between you and your Lord. But not only did he do that, when he left his cloak, the text says he jumped to his feet. And I tell you, you can jump to your feet if nothing is blocking your feet. 
And so you got to get those things, those old memories, that self-limiting belief, fears, that I can't do it attitude, someone gossiped about me. All that has to be moved out of the way so that you can get on your feet. Uh-huh. Get on your feet. The text says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Get on your feet. If God before me, who can be against me? I said, get on your feet. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Christ can get us on our feet, but y'all are mess for him. <laughs> All right, let me wrap this up. Let me wrap this up. Ah. <laughs> uh, Verse 51, Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? You know what? That question is not just stuck in Mark chapter 10. That question lives today. Jesus is asking all of us, what do you want me to do for you? And I tell you, in order to answer that question, you're going to need faith. You've got to have faith. Because I tell you, the answer from Jesus is always yes. Always yes. Yes and amen. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Jesus said, go. Your faith has already healed you. You got to have faith. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Verse 6 of Hebrews 11 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For anyone that comes to God must believe that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. Jesus says, yes, what do you want me to do for you? Well, you just need faith. He has a track record of saying yes. You see, in Mark 1, there was a leper that was healed. Jesus says yes. Mark chapter 2, a man with palsy was healed. Jesus says yes. In Mark 3, there was a man with a withered hand that was healed. Jesus says yes. Mark chapter 5, a man with a demonic spirit was set free of that demon. Jesus says, yes. Mark 5, there was a woman with an issue of blood. Y'all remember her, don't you? She was healed. Jesus says, yes. Mark chapter 5, Jairus' daughter was dead, but, he, but she rose again. Jesus says, yes. Mark chapter 6, 5,000 people were fed. Jesus says, yes. What I'm trying to tell you is, is whatever you need from Jesus, just ask him. Just ask. He can do amazingly, abundantly above all that we could ask or think because of the riches in Christ Jesus. Blind Bartimaeus was on the side of the road begging and blind. But at the end of the story, he's seeing and he's with Jesus. Amen? And I, and I appeal to you the same could happen for you. Jesus is calling you. He wants you to be with him. And he'll give you that sight and that healing and that breakthrough that you need in your life. Will you pray with me? Dear Father God, we thank you so much for this love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your sight-giving power. Thank you for blessing our lives and helping us to see not only physically but spiritually the things you would have us to see. We pray, O oh God, that you bless this church, bless the leaders, bless the minister, O oh God, that we continue to shine your light for Christ. And it is in his name we pray. Amen.